Pacific Northwest Wrestling, also known as Big Time Wrestling and Portland Wrestling, are the common names used to refer to several different professional wrestling companies, both past and present, based in Portland, Oregon. The first company, that would later become Portland Wrestling, was founded by Herb Owen in 1925. It was the Northwest Territory of the National Wrestling Alliance from the Alliance's inception in 1948 until 1992. The area was brought to its prime by Herb's son, Don Owen, and this version of Pacific Northwest Wrestling saw many of the top names in the business come through on a regular basis. The Pacific Northwest was considered one of the main pro wrestling territories from the 1960s to the 1980s. Portland Wrestling was forced to close its doors in July 1992. The closure came as a result of a slowdown in the wrestling business during the early 1990s, a declaration of bankruptcy by Portland Wrestling's main television sponsor, and a negative follow-up from a shift in regulatory emphasis by the Oregon Athletic Commission. The telecast, which originated on Portland station KPTV, ended in December 1991, were replaced on KPTV by syndicated WWF programming. Portland Wrestling's referee, Sandy Barr, purchased a company from the Owen family in 1992 and continued the tradition of professional wrestling in the Pacific Northwest under the name Championship Wrestling USA. A new wrestling promotion emerged in 2000 calling itself Portland Wrestling and claiming to be a restart of the original Pacific Northwest slash Portland Wrestling. It stressed a title lineage to the old NWE PNW championships, but unlike the Don Owen promotion, the new incarnation of Portland Wrestling was not an NWA member. Due to legal problems the company's owner encountered, the promotion was forced to close down in 2007 and the owner sold his ownership rights to former announcer Don Koss. Koss, in conjunction with Roddy Piper, one of Owen's biggest latter-day stars and Portland area resident launched a new promotion in 2012 centered on a television program entitled Portland Wrestling Uncut. This program also originated on KPTV, though it would later move to another Portland television station. It was 1920. Well, the 18th Amendment to the Constitution was introduced, which outlawed the production and consumption of alcohol, more commonly known as prohibition, the flu and pneumonia spread worldwide, killing many thousands. George Polly, the human fly, was arrested on the 30th floor of the Woolworth Building in New York while trying to climb up the outside. The teabag was invented by Joseph Krieger and former world middleweight and world lightweight heavyweight wrestling champion Ted Thigh came to Portland with plans to promote both boxing and wrestling. Ted Thigh had a long successful career in professional wrestling and later turned promoter. The Seattle State Athletic Commission investigated professional wrestling in March 1931 and Thigh's business activities and the legitimacy of the business were hot topics. On March 27th, the Seattle Post Inquirer reported that Charlie Hansen spoke with a commission member and explained that he used to work for Thigh. Hansen said that he had some insider information that wrestling in the area was not on the square. The commission member invited Hansen to appear later, however during the hearing a phone call came in to Thigh from Hansen and Thigh had reportedly told him not to speak to anyone until he spoke to him first. At the time, however, the commission members had no idea who Thigh was talking to, but Thigh admitted that it was in fact Hansen when pressed on the issue. Ironically, Hansen was then unavailable to be reached by the commission for comment. Thigh told the commission that his Coast Athletic Club took 25% of the earnings for wrestlers who appeared for it, which was confirmed by Musty Musgrave previously. Also that wrestling in the area was under the control of Billy Sandow and Ed Strangler Lewis. There were charges that matches were fixed and Thigh denied that he'd participated in any such situations. Thigh was said to have tried to get Bill Beth to lay down in his match with Koloff, but that Beth would not go along because he was not in the main event. One of Thigh's main accusers was a referee named Abe Kuby. On April 3, 1931, the commission determined that charges against Thigh hadn't been proven in any way, shape or form. Thigh then hired Herb Owen as his assistant. While Thigh was on a trip home in Australia, Owen had the ownership of the company put in his name. Due to rules in effect within the state of Oregon at that time, Owen now had sole rights to sponsor all boxing and wrestling within the state. 
Herb Owens started out promoting boxing matches, but soon began promoting wrestling matches as well, focusing on lightweights. During his time, sons Don and Elton Owen began helping their father in the family business, helping set up cards and even stepping into the ring on occasion to box or wrestle. During the early years, Herb brought in boxer Jack Dempsey. According to Barry Owen, Don's son, Dempsey even refereed some wrestling matches for Owen. An unknown to many at the time, George Wagner worked for Owen early in his career. While in PNW, Wagner developed the character for which he would become famous, Gorgeous George. Wagner is reported to have married his first wife in the ring before a match in Eugene, Oregon. In 1942, following his death, Herb's son Don took over the company. In 1944, Don Owen promoted several cards with women wrestlers, until female wrestling was outlawed in Oregon until 1975. The National Wrestling Alliance was formed in 1948 with Don Owen as one of the founding members. This started the beginning of what became known as NWA Pacific Northwest. On July 10th, 1953, Don Owen started what was the first regular professional wrestling program on television. Pacific Northwest Wrestling aired a weekly 60-minute live program originally called Heidelberg Wrestling, named for its sponsor, Heidelberg Brewing Company of Tacoma, Washington. The show was initially broadcast on KPTV, but moved to rival KOIN-TV in 1955. Along with the move came the show's new name, Portland Wrestling. The 1950s were a golden era for Portland Wrestling, seeing wrestlers such as Ed Francis, Corey Guerrero, and Tony Bourne come into the territory. During this time, Harry Elliott, a former Oregon State University wrestling champion and later the school's wrestling coach, began working for Don Owen as a referee and putting on spot shows in the territory. In 1958, Elliott obtained a contract with CBS Television to broadcast Seattle-based wrestling matches throughout all of Washington and parts of Alaska, British Columbia, California, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, Utah, and Wyoming. Elliott promoted these matches as well as spot matches throughout Washington, Idaho, and Northeastern Oregon, while Don Owen continued to handle the bookings. After the opening of the Portland Memorial Coliseum in 1961, Don Owen occasionally promoted wrestling cards at the venue, drawing good crowds. In 1966, Harry Elliott and Don Owen promoted and booked one of the biggest matches ever in Seattle, selling out the Seattle Center Coliseum with 15,500 fans to see Lou Thez beat Gene Kaniski. In 1967, Portland Wrestling returned to KPTV. That year, management changed within CBS Television, and PNW's regionally broadcast wrestling show was dropped, which subsequently led to Harry Elliott's retirement in 1968. Frank Bonema, a non-air personality in KPTV's sports department, took over the announcing duties at the time, serving as the voice of Portland Wrestling until shortly before his untimely death on October 5, 1982, at age 49. Despite losing its regionally broadcast television program in 1967, Portland Wrestling was still doing well. In 1968, Owen bought and renovated a bowling alley in North Portland which became the Portland Sports Arena and the new home of Portland Wrestling. The 1970s continued to be good to Portland Wrestling with the addition of such superstars as Buddy Rose, Ed Waskowski, Roddy Piper, Jesse Ventura, Lonnie Main, Jimmy Snuka and Stan Stasiak. Dutch Savage bought into Don Owen Sports and began promoting PNW cards in the state of Washington. The Owens promotion faced opposition from several outlaw promotions throughout the 1970s but remained strong. For several years during the 1970s and 1980s, PNW's Portland Wrestling program was syndicated in an edited 60-minute version known as Big Time Wrestling and was shown on stations throughout the Pacific Northwest. Between 1976 and 1985, it was rumored Playboy Buddy Rose had become famous for drawing more money than any other wrestler in the history of Portland wrestling. In 1982 and 1983, Rose wrestled in the WWF, but on his days off, he returned to the Northwest and worked one night stands for Don Owen. Rose was credited for sold out venues on both the East and West Coast. In 1978, Rose was the United States champion for Roy Shire Productions in the San Francisco Bay Area. As a team, he and Ed Wiskowski became NWA World Tag Team Champions, defending the title in matches up and down the West Coast for Don Owens, Roy Shire, and Los Angeles promoter Mike LaBelle. 
Wrestling on television became a hot commodity during the 1980s. In 1982, Elton Owen, who had continued working in the family business as his brother Don's right-hand man, retired. Elton died a short time later. Don's son Barry Owen began promoting shows in Washington. He would then take over promoting the weekly Friday shows in Eugene as well as spot shows, eventually promoting most of the shows which had previously been promoted by Elton. Frank Bonema was admitted to the hospital on September 25, 1982 after suffering a heart attack. Bonema would not return to his Portland wrestling hosting duties, dying 10 days later. On October 9th, veteran announcer Don Koss, who had filled in as a host during this time, officially took over the announcing duties. Koss had previously announced televised wrestling matches in Salem, Oregon over the defunct station KVDO. Wrestlers such as Portland natives Billy Jack Haynes, Roddy Piper, King Parsons, Matt Bourne, Gentleman Chris Adams, Rip Oliver, Buddy Rose, David Schultz, and many others competed regularly. Owen had a working relationship with Jack Atkinson's world-class promotion in Dallas, which produced several talent exchanges, the most famous of which was when Adams and Parsons were sent to World Class in 1983. Both wrestlers became two of the most famous non-Von Erich wrestlers in the promotion's history and became Texas mainstays throughout the rest of their respective careers. On May 21, 1985, in honor of the Owen family's 60 years of promoting in the PNW, a supercard called 60th Anniversary Wrestling Extravaganza was held at the Portland Memorial Coliseum. The show featured representatives from the AWA, NWA, and WWF including the world champions of both the NWA and AWA and the world tag team champions of the AWA all defending their titles. The PNW accomplished something the WWF had yet to achieve at the time, a sold out coliseum. Barry Owen claimed that this event had the highest attendance ever for a sporting event at that coliseum. On January 21, 1986, Portland Wrestling held a follow-up to the supercard called Super Extravaganza, also at the Portland Memorial Coliseum. The card was limited to NWA talent and was not as large and successful as the first supercard. The PNW took a number of hits in the late 1980s. Changes to a centralized Oregon Boxing and Wrestling Commission began to affect the industry through new rules and fines levied at wrestlers and promoters. Additionally, the expansion of the WWF and WCW into national promotions with nationwide television deals ran most local or regional wrestling concerns out of business. This left few territories for younger wrestlers to develop their skills early in their careers, thus leaving very green talent for the non-national promotions. By 1987, Don Owen was the only remaining member of the original NWA group. In 1987, Len Denton, working for Don Owen, became the first booker for PNW. While still developing who would become stars of the future such as Art Barr, Scotty the Body, C.W. Bergstrom, Steve Dahl and Rex King. Scotty, recognized as a good talker, was eventually used as Casa's wisecrack making broadcast partner. Without new talent and other reasons mostly lacking good sponsors, business continued to slide into the 1990s. In 1991, Pacific Northwest Wrestling's main television sponsor declared bankruptcy. Despite remaining the highest rated, locally produced show aired in the Portland television market, Portland Wrestling was cancelled in December 1991 after 38 continuous years as a weekly program. When the show was cancelled, it was the longest running non-news show on television and the third longest overall behind Meet the Press and the CBS Evening News. It is still one of the top 20 longest running shows in television. Don Owen continued to run wrestling shows throughout Oregon and Washington until April 30th, 1992, when he retired and sold the entire company, minus the sports arena, to Portland Wrestling's referee and future promoter, Sandy Barr. The Portland Sports Arena, as well as a former supermarket building next door, which was used by Barr for the flea market he ran, were eventually acquired by a local church. Sandy Barr continued promoting wrestling in the Pacific Northwest under the company names of Championship Wrestling USA and IGA Wrestling. Barr created new titles for the promotion and abandoned the previous ones. As Barr faced challenges when dealing with the Oregon State Athletic Commission similar to what Owen faced, he decided to move the promotion across the Columbia River to Vancouver, Washington. Barr purchased late night airtime on local television station KOYN for a couple years but was never given a stable time slot. 
Barr would continue to run weekly shows until shortly before his death on June 2, 2007. In 1996, Matt Bourne became booker for CW USA and crowds began to rise. Sandy Barr abruptly closed Championship Wrestling USA in 1997. The remaining weeks of television that had been purchased on KOIN were filled with programs from 1993. Matt Bourne joined up with Ivan Caffery, who owned a local radio station and created the new Portland Wrestling. They ran shows at the Aladdin Theater in Portland and later a flea market near Portland Meadows. Their biggest success came in November 1997 when former University of Oregon football player Josh Wilcox made his pro debut in front of a crowd of over 700 fans. The physical belt that was used as the NWA Pacific Northwest title was used at various times by its owner Len Denton before being sold on eBay in 2006. The last title claimant was part-time pro wrestler Matt Farmer, who defended the title at local Lucha Libre shows. In late 2000, wrestling returned to Portland with the opening of Portland Wrestling. This new promotion claimed that its heavyweight title and tag team title lineage were the same as the previous titles operated by Don Owen Sports. However, this Portland Wrestling was not an NWA member, nor was it directly linked in any way to the original Portland Wrestling. The new Portland Wrestling initially aired on Portland's WBTV network affiliate, KWB-TV. Frank Culberson Jr., an advertising representative for the station, served first as ringside announcer and later as executive producer. KWBP changed hands in December 2002 and the new owners dropped virtually all local programming from its lineup due to a decline in fan base. This development occurred at the same time Portland Wrestling was having major difficulties with the Portland State Government, in particular the Athletic Commission and the Attorney General's Office. On May 10, 2007, Culbertson, who was still running the operations of the promotion, was arraigned on charges for aggravated theft for allegedly embezzling well over $10,000 from Portland-based Broadway Cab Company, where he had been working in the accounting department as a controller. He was sentenced to 30 days in jail, 5 years probation, and was required to repay the cab company $48,000 in restitution. The event came to a surprise as Don Koss, who in light of Culbertson's criminal charges has expressed uncertainty on the future of Portland wrestling. On October 22, 2012, it was announced that KPTV and KPDX would be reviving Portland wrestling under the name Portland Wrestling Uncut. Under the direction of WWE Hall of Famer and PNW legend Rowdy Roddy Piper, the new series debuted on October 27th on KPTV following Game 3 of the 2012 World Series. Portland Wrestling Rights owner Don Koss has also returned to announce the matches along with special guests. The wrestling matches were taped at KPTV's Beaverton Studios. Two months later on December 29th, Portland Wrestling Uncut moved to KPTV's sister station, KPDX, retaining the Saturday night time slot for the program that was held when it was revived on KPTV. Portland Wrestling Uncut was promoted by Pete Schweitzer, owner of Schweitzer Entertainment Group. Portland Wrestling Uncut went on a brief hiatus due to a damaged ring. Portland Wrestling Uncut was scheduled to return to KPDX in July or August of 2014 after taking a step back to regroup when an investment capital deal fell through. Despite efforts to resume Portland Wrestling Uncut, the program eventually faded away and was replaced by West Coast Wrestling Connection on KPDX. There was no word as to whether or not Portland Wrestling Uncut will return to production or if it ever will. Sadly, on July 31st, 2015, WWE Hall of Famer Roddy Piper died in his sleep at the age of 61. Vince McMahon was quoted in saying Roddy Piper was one of the most entertaining, controversial, and bombastic performers ever in the WWE, beloved by millions of fans around the world. Film director John Carpenter said he was a great wrestler, a masterful entertainer, and a good friend. He was married to his wife Kitty since 1982 and had four children. That was the untold story of Pacific Northwest Wrestling.